Evidence in Walmart parking lot leads mother to solve son's disappearance after 28 years. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. In the summer of 1988, David Jackson, a 24-year-old recently divorced father, vanished from his Florida home. The harrowing uncertainties surrounding Jackson's disappearance have haunted the family for over 28 years. Recently, however, the case was reopened by Florida detectives who may have found the break they need to find out what happened to David once and for all. David Jackson was a handsome, confident teenager who was well on his way to becoming a stand-up young man in the summer of 1981. He would graduate high school in a year and then be off to college and begin a promising career. His grades made it clear that David could do anything he put his mind to. Sophomore Barbara Britton was going to high school with David Jackson in 1982. She described him as the first love of her life. The two were inseparable. Like all young lovers, they denied their parents' concerns and found time to spend together even in the wee hours of the morning. As time passed, their love blossomed. David Jackson graduated Hollywood Hills High School in 1982 and just a year later he married Barbara Britton. The wedding was not something that Harry Britton, Barbara's father, approved of, of course, but it was necessary. Barbara, though, still in high school herself, was pregnant with David's son. Family relations were tough at first, but seemed to level out when little Johnny was born. The Jacksons and the Brittons were happy, but the marriage soon turned rocky, to say the least. Eighteen months after they'd become man and wife, David and Barbara filed for divorce. But what would become of little Johnny? Barbara had left her no-good husband for the much older but more stable John Wolfe. And despite the newfound respect they developed between Harry Britton and his erstwhile son-in-law, there was still some animosity there. This was only compounded by the fact that Barbara now had a much better potential husband in line. Although nothing could be done, David was determined to be there for little Johnny and be a part of his life. Then Barbara dropped the bomb on David. She and John Wolf were going to be moving out of Arizona and they were taking little Johnny with them. There seemed to be nothing David could do, despite his visitation rights. He may never be able to see his son again. Not if he were so far away. So he did the only thing he could do. David sued for full custody. Then on the morning of June 26, 1988, David Jackson was reported missing. He'd failed to pick up his brother from the airport as promised and had not gone into work. To David's family, both of these things were uncharacteristic of a man who took his responsibilities very seriously. If he didn't show up, something was very wrong. Police searched his home and found no sign of Jackson and no indication that he had left. Then they discovered his black 1979 Toyota Celica in the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood Airport long-term lot, almost three months after his disappearance. The car had no fingerprints, hair or blood inside of it, not even any of David's prints. Instead, it contained only a pack of cigarettes, a six-pack of beer, missing a can, and David's hairbrush. Mark Jackson, David's brother, was convinced something terrible had happened to his brother. Within days of the disappearance, Mark started receiving daily phone calls, but no one ever said anything on the other line. It was just light breathing. After a week of this, a deep voice told Mark to leave your brother's disappearance alone, then hung up. David's roommate's mother was also similarly harassed by eerie, unnerving phone calls. One call warned her that, your son better be careful or the same thing will happen to him as David Jackson. Whatever had happened to David, it most certainly was foul play, but the police couldn't seem to prove anything. Mark had spent years searching for his brother, employing the help of psychics and scuba gear in his search. He dove in the local canal ceaselessly for proof of his brother's body in the months following his disappearance. But as months turned to years, the Jacksons had to face facts. They might never find David. Until one day, decades later, when Detective Donna Velasquez happened upon an interesting case on her desk. The case involved the strange disappearance of one David Churchill Jackson of Florida. The case was a tough one. There were, of course, no leads and hadn't been any new evidence uncovered since the late 80s. Still, she did a little digging on the internet. 
a recent tool allowed investigators to indicate height, weight, and date of disappearance and check it against unidentified bodies in their database. Velazquez had found a match. The remains of a white male had been found in the city of Miramar, south of Pembroke Pines, where David had once lived. Construction workers there found the bones in the process of building a Walmart shopping center over an old empty lot. After carefully identifying the remains as David's, they sent the cremated bones to Jackson's mother. David was finally home. He'd finally been found. The only mystery that remained was how he'd been killed and by whom. John Jackson was anxious when he found out the police had reopened his father's case. Like most of Jackson's family, he wanted to know what had happened to his father. Barbara Britton, it seemed, was not as excited. I thought that was closed a long time ago, she said. They need to leave it alone. This curious statement was not missed by Velasquez, who pursued the case. In time, she discovered the truth. John Wolfe or Barbara Britton had either murdered David Jackson together or had conspired with someone else to do it. When confronted with this accusation after years of guilt, John Wolfe finally confessed. The plan was apparently hatched by Harry Britton, Barbara's father, who never approved of David and was anxious to help Wolfe and his daughter get on with their new lives. The three conspired to lure David to a Dania Beach motel where Wolf shot him in cold blood. Then, all together, and with no small amount of awkwardness between the three of them, they moved to dispose of the body. Wolf and Harry Britton brought it out to an empty lot the next day to bury it for good. They never thought it would be found, but when the Walmart was built, they dug up the remains and moved them to a garbage bag which would be picked up the next day. Once at the dump, the remains were discovered by police only to be properly identified by Velasquez years later. Wolf was convicted of the crime and sentenced to life in prison, but not before implicating both Barbara Britton and her now-deceased father in crime. Though Barbara claims that she was not present when David was killed, she did in fact call David and ask him to meet her concerning her son. She was held for three years on bail and awaited trial. Barbara Britton, who is now 48, eventually pled guilty to luring David Jackson to the motel that fateful night. She was accused of accessory after the fact to first-degree murder and was sentenced to two years of community service and a further eight years of probation in accordance with a deal made with the prosecutors. Jackson's mother, though upset that her son's ex-wife is only receiving a fraction of a sentence for her complicity in David's murder, is still happy that the uncertainty is finally gone. In one fell swoop, her son was found and lost all over again. Yet with the mystery of David Jackson's disappearance finally solved, he can rest in peace at last.